Blender 4.0 just released and with it came a huge list of changes. Like always, if you want to work along with us, you can download everything I use down below. So let's start off by talking about the huge change and that is actually a new color management called instead of Filmic, it's AGX and that opens up a huge range of possibilities for visual effects inside of Blender. To demonstrate this, we're going to do a super easy scene inside Blender. So make sure to watch till the end because you don't want to miss this. So let's go ahead and go up to plus VFX and motion tracking and open up our footage. I went ahead and converted my footage to a image sequence, so I'm just going to open the clip and then I want to come up to track, set the scene frames, prefetch our footage, and then I'm actually going to come over here and very important, we want to be working in the standard color transform for now since that is what's going to be our video color. Uh, so standard right there. And then we just need to camera track the scene. Now, I'm not going to be going over all these settings and what they mean in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and set the match to previous frame, normalize and set our tracking settings extra correlation to a 0.9. Again, I'm not really going to go over all these steps because I actually have a dedicated camera tracking tutorial. Then let's go ahead and detect some features. I want to come and set this threshold to a 0.01 and then the distance to an 80. And then at the first frame, we're just going to hold control NT and have those trackers track forward. Okay, so once they're at the end, let's pull this up and just kind of delete some of the outliers uh, that we see right here. So these kind of four right there and everything else looks pretty natural. Let's go ahead and solve the camera motion. Now I did some testing and I found the A and B keyframe is around a 110 to 140, I think works the best for my scene. And then I'm gonna refine everything and go ahead and solve the camera motion. So we got a low solve error. Let's go ahead and clean that up a little bit by cleaning up the tracks and pushing this number up until we just select a few up here. And then we can delete those tracks and resolve the camera motion. Now I went ahead and cleaned up the tracks a couple more times and was able to get it down to a 0.24. I actually have a updated camera tracking tutorial coming soon, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Anyways, let's go ahead and set up our scene. So set background, set up the tracking scene, and then let's just orientate kind of our floor. So I'm gonna select three points right there, set our floor plane, and that's looking pretty matched to our scene. Let's go ahead and set the origin. So I'm gonna set the origin to be right here, and then the x-axis to be this one. Uh, so it's roughly in line with our table. We can always play around with it a little bit later. And then let's go ahead and to find the scale of our scene and we do want to try to keep that as close as possible i'll notice uh kind of i don't know the exact scale of the scene but we can guesstimate a little bit i'll notice that this is kind of half a foot if i think about it in kind of the real world uh and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select these two points set the scale and the distance is actually in meters so i'm uh, about half a foot i'm going to say is about a uh we'll do a point two so a little over half the half a foot right there um that's the conversion to meters and so now we have the scene correctly set up let's come out of here and then uh, blender automatically set up some stuff i'm kind of going to breeze over this again because i want to get to the actual blender 4.0 feature everything else uh everything so far has kind of been the same kind of workflow so let's go to background and uh, delete the foreground collection we also need to delete the background view layer and then also if we come up, up to compositing you'll notice that some of the nodes are actually different and they've organized it a lot better uh, blender 4.0 is amazing with that so i'm going to go and delete these four nodes and plug the image into the image and then we can come out uh, to layout and then uh, let's go ahead and delete the cube we don't really need that anymore and now we have the scene set up okay so let's come up here i want to delete this light and then i actually downloaded a model off of polyhaven so you want to download that it actually comes as a blend file and so what we're going to do is file append and then locate that blend file so here it is. If you double click inside of there, it'll open up this. We want to go to object and then just select this and append that in our scene. Uh, so now we actually have this. Let's go ahead and scale this plane down just so we can see this and hit H to hide. And we can go ahead and position this head uh, exactly where we want it to be. And it's a little too tall for my scene. Again, with our set scale, we try to set it as close as possible, but it might be a little bit off or the model just might be a little too uh, tall. So let's just S scale that down and roughly that size is what I'm going to go for. And so now uh, let's go ahead and finally get into the render properties and get into the actual uh, blender 4.0 features and so let's come up here we want to go instead of ev we can go to cycles we want to go to gpu compute i'm going to denoise the viewport but not the render let's change the render down to a 64 sample count and also the 64 for the viewport as well we're going to change those in a little bit so don't worry about that and so now uh, the moment of truth and why we uh, are doing this new kind of workflow inside blender and that's actually again because of the agx kind of color space down here um, you will notice that we don't have our footage in there anymore so let's go and set that to be uh, film transparent just so we can see the background and i also like to select the camera up here and go to background images and change the opacity up just so we can see a little bit closer what we're working with and so if you don't know anything about uh, the color management section inside of blender before kind of the standard thing was standard obviously inside of blender and that you know just gave some kind of poor color data if i go ahead and shift a i'm going to add a light just kind of demonstrate what i'm saying 
if I add an area light, I'm just going to kind of blow this up here and let's kind of overexpose it a little bit just to kind of showcase. And so now you can see that everything is basically clipping. Uh, there's super ugly white. And so then Blender adopted the filmic color space. And so that is what we've been using for years, um, kind of the standard operation in Blender. But even then, it's still not that great. If I go ahead and blow this up a lot more, uh, you can see that we're starting to have those kind of clipping issues again, uh, like we had in standard, uh, though they're not as bad. And we actually have much more uh, dynamic range there to work with. Finally, recently with Blender 4.0, uh, we have the AGX color transform. And you haven't noticed a huge difference, but in uh, kind of the blown out white areas over here, we now have much more high dy dynamic range. Uh, so basically that means that we can have a lot more light levels and exposure values. And basically it'll match much closer to the real world environment. And so, of course, you have to use the correct view transform for each of the specific objects inside Blender. And so anything that you do inside of the 3D viewport, such as CG, your materials, your objects, everything is going to look the best in AGX. And so uh, that is what we have it set here. But you'll notice uh, that the background kind of color is a little bit off from how I shot it. Um, and so if I go ahead and change it back to standard, you'll know that, notice that the background is much more correctly colored. However, our guy is blown out. And so you might be wondering wondering how we combine the best of both worlds and kind of get a result that is going to a match the kind of real world environment of our CG, but also combine it and make it a uh, pleasing image to the actual uh, background footage that we used. And so again, uh, since we just want to render out kind of the CG pass, first of all, let's go ahead and set this back to AGX because that's the uh, best one right now. Let's go ahead and play around a little bit with the lighting of our scene uh, now that we don't have to demonstrate it anymore. Let's set this to a more reasonable number. So like 20, something like that, just trying to match kind of the, um, you know, ambient kind of room uh, temperature right there. Let's go ahead and all H unhide our plane down here and it's automatically set to be a shadow catcher, but I will notice that our little head is floating up uh, because we scaled it down before. So let's just come to the side view and make sure we scoot that down. We want that to be resting on our floor plane uh, just so it's not floating in midair. And so now uh, let's try to match the lighting a little bit more. I'll notice that I kind of have like this backlight kind of um, rim light over here on some of these objects. You can sh see the shadows actually coming towards the camera. So let's come up here. I'm going to shift D, duplicate this light over here. And then uh, I'll go ahead and grab this little point and point it at our statue. And then we actually need to increase the power a little bit and decrease the size. Again, I'm not really going to be going over all these steps here uh, since we really care more about the workflow rather than the result. But that's giving us a pretty all right um, kind of look. Um, as you can see up here, we're kind of overexposing a little bit. So let's just decrease that. We'll say like a... 100 for now uh, something like that that looks pretty good and so of course i can you know try to match that all day but um for the sake of this tutorial that's what i'm going to leave it with uh so now let's actually come uh composite this out and so i'm not going to do uh compositing in this project and so what i can do is actually select these two nodes hit m to kind of uh, disable that and i want to plug the render layers into our composite and then let's just view that and so now uh, that's where we, you know, have to play with uh, some of the render settings. Now let's come back uh, to the render properties uh, for my sample count. I'm going to set it to a 128. And then I also want to denoise uh, the actual kind of uh, CG render. So I'm going to come to the view layer properties, add denoising data, and then come back to compositing. We can go ahead and uh, add a new denoise node. And let's just plug all of the correct settings inside of there. And then uh, that denoise is going up into the composite, which is correct. And so let's come over to the render properties. Let's make sure we have motion blur on, which is correct. Um, now this is going to render out pretty fast with my sh machine. And so I'm not going to really go into all the light path settings and all that. Let's set up our output properties. I'm going to save it as a PNG sequence. You can, of course, do EXR if you want some higher quality stuff right there. And we are going to be sticking inside of uh, Blender for the compositing. However, I highly recommend that you... Uh, render in nuke if you can or any other compositing program since that'll be 10 times better for uh you know compositing than blender so after we've selected our folder we can come to png i want to set it to rgba uh, for the alpha and then depending on how much color depth you need i believe agx is better with 16 uh, color bit now than filmic was but i'm just going to stick on 8 bit since i don't want the uh, large file size that comes with 16 bits of data and then uh, what I'm gonna do is save the project. Let's come out of rendered mode uh, when you're rendering, and then we can go ahead and render the animation. Okay, so once that is finished rendering, we are actually done with this Blender project. Let's go ahead and save that and go to file, and we're gonna do, open a new general. And this is where we're actually gonna do the compositing. You can, of course, uh, take it inside of another compositing program, but we're gonna stick in Blender, uh, You know, make it easy for this tutorial. Let's go ahead and add uh, two image nodes. 
So I'm going to duplicate this, Shift D, duplicate that down. Uh, this one down here, let's make our uh, CG pass. Okay, so here's the pass. Let's A, open the image. So we have that. And then we also need to open up our footage sequence. Okay, so once we have both of those in, let's go ahead and Shift A, add an alpha uh, over. Of course, like always, this is kind of the same workflow as before. But now with AGX, uh, we have this result. We do want to go ahead and convert pre-multiply. You'll notice that we kind of have this weird edge here. And so we do want to go ahead and do that. And so now for the most important part of this tutorial, the whole reason we did all of this is to actually go ahead and go back into standard now that both of our kind of footage and our CG pass are both in that like sRGB uh, color space. We need to set the color space uh, up in render uh, color management. We need to set it from filmic to standard. And so now you can see it's looking much more realistic. And this is a much more realistic result than you would get in Blender, uh, the previous versions of Blender. Um, you can see we have a lot of good lighting data, a lot of good reflection all of that uh, AGX is just such an amazing tool and I'm super excited to see how realistic we can push some of the uh, technology inside of blender now especially for free and so let's go ahead and finish off the composite I'm not going to go uh, too in depth but basically let's just uh, try to match the blur first of all um, so I'm going to add a blur node we're just going to leave it on Gaussian and I think uh, in testing I did a two for both the x and the y um, and you can't really see it too well but if I kind of disable that and enable that you'll see that there's a little bit of a blur just because it's trying to match to the actual table uh, the blur the defocus of the table and finally I want to add a glare node and because I shot this on an iPhone it's you know very kind of foggy lens and all that stuff it, it's hard to tell but there's like a little bit of glare on some of the uh, overexposed parts so we want to try to mimic that let's go to fog glow i'm just going to set the threshold down uh, to like a 0.5 we'll see if that's doing anything yeah so it's adding a little bit let's actually decrease it one more to a 0.4 and see if that does anything yeah so you can see that that's kind of bringing out some of the kind of glow here um you can of course you know composite it however you want the most important thing is that your last node must be plugged into the composite over here and then once you're happy with your composite it's the same as always let's come up to the output properties set a new file location and then let's save it out as a uh, movie video so let's go to file format uh, let's do ffmpeg encoding i like to set it to quicktime these are just kind of my render settings i like to do for youtube uh, h.264 is fine for what i'm going to use it for high quality is what i like to set that to and then finally let's set the uh, scene kind of frames down here um i'll know that we have 200 frames up here so we need to set the end key frame to be 200 and finally with all that set up and us uh, remember we are in the standard view transform very important there uh, we want to go ahead and render out the animation one final time Okay, so here is the final result that we got from this tutorial. Hopefully you guys follow along and understand how powerful Blender 4.0 is for visual effects inside of Blender. It would mean a lot to me if you guys consider liking and subscribing so it would help out the channel. But anyways, I will see you in the next video.